Well, on today's episode, Chocro Pro is back for another season. Season 13, as I believe, with the number 217, with two tag team matches. As you know, this is one of three shows that are taking place in starting today, all the way to Sunday. But also, we're going to review Gleet's recent show that took place on the 9th of April, called G Pro Wrestling Version 21. Recently, we've been hearing that there's a new faction within Gleet, which will not be a happy camping situation for the only two dominant factions in the promotion. I'm talking about Strong Hearts and Bulk Orchestra. And also some news updates, one regarding WWE is interested in Bloodsport. And of course, as you all know, today is April 15th. If you guys know what that means, you know what that means. Now there has been concerns and worry. Not coming from the wrestlers themselves, but certain people in WWE. So, let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that it's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Right here. So, Choco Pro is back with another season, season 13, I believe. Right now we're in 217 with two matches. Now, this is one of three shows in three days is gonna be taking place. So if you guys are confused with timeline, it happened at uh, 7 p.m. Japanese time, which was here 3 a.m. Pacific time, 6 a.m. East Coast time. So let's get to the matches. The first match we have is tag team action. We have the reunited Dragon Ninja, John Chiru, and Sayuri. Now some of you probably ask, where was Sayuri at? Well, I wish I knew, but my guess is uh, she probably has her other job she was contenting. But it was great to see her. But however, the Dragon Ninja has to contend with the best bros. A team they have faced time and time again. Either a non-title match or a title match. So it doesn't matter wh what it is. But I have to say they did a pretty good job in this particular match trying to hold on their own. But apparently you cannot beat the best coordinated way of the best bros who have been the longest reigning Asia Dream Tag Team Champions. As you know, they lost those titles not too long ago against CDK, but now they're trying to get back into the tag team. We tried to obtain every belt that Choco Pro has. So, but however, there have been some many ways they were the Dragon Ninja. They try to counter certain moves that they've been aware of, specifically the new move they've been using, the Dolphin, whatever they call it. But it worked this time. But as they say, second or third time is always a charm, and they pulled it off. All thanks to Mitsuruga. When she pinned Sayuri, giving them a much better edge. But this will not be the last that those two teams will confront each other. Now, our second and final match, we have another tag team match. We got Shin Suzuki teaming up with Chi Koshikawa. Now, some of you probably ask, we've seen Chi Koshikawa at many of their events. How come she hasn't wrestled, if you guys have been aware? Recently, not too long ago, before the end of, the, of, of Season 12, she injured her hands. Now, if you guys noticed, her finger is fingers are taped up. Uh, I'm sure they were being careful with her not to make the injury more worse. But they are facing against Sayaka, and of course, one half of CDK and the current Asia Dream Tag Team Champion and KOD Tag Team Champion Masahiro Takanashi. Now, <coughs> you could say and look at okay, Sayaka doesn't have the best win track record. But she knows when she has to step away and allow Masahiro Takanashi take the, the, the final strike. That's always been 
what I've been noticing. I know she has been on a learning curve with Masa, but as always have been. Junchito and Chioka Shikawa, they did a pretty good job. They have been recently trying to become a much stable tag team. But unfortunately, she ended up in a bad submission tactic by Masahiro, forcing her to tap out, showing once again her his superiority. But luckily, she did not hurt her fingers. That's a good thing. So they win the match. Now back into the Jonkin tournament, we got, of course, a very interesting one. Um, I did not expect a whole lot. Now, Balinaki got eliminated in the first round by Chi. May advance, but she lost, if you guys are wondering. Sayuri made it to the second round, but she lost against Chi as well. But I wasn't sure who was going to win. But I always I always had that feeling that someone was going to win it. And this one was, in fact, Chiko Shikawa. So she won beautifully. I love it. So she had that look in her face. She was willing to share her half of the chocolate with, Ch with a Chin. I'm like, hmm, she's been a good sport. You know, I think she wants to try something as a tag team with him. As you know, her normal tag team partner is Hagen Ishino, known as the Egg Tarts. But it's still unclear if we ever see him again or or not. But we just don't know. So that's pretty much it. So this is day one of three days of Choco Pro. Can't wait for 218 and 219. But just to remind you, 219 is going to be a one match only. This is for the Asia Dream Tag Team Champion. CDK will have the first title defense against Kappa and Saya, uh, Sayaka Obihiro. But right now, let's move on to the last review, Glade. Okay, so let's do our last review with Gleet. It happened on the 9th of April with G Pro Wrestling version 21. Open up with the bulk orchestra, you know, doing a little promo. I don't know what they were saying. But they were interrupted by a new faction consistent of Kaichi Sato, um, Jun Toncho, and Tetsuya um, Izushi. Basically, as you know, re um, having a third faction has now become a problem, not only for bulk orchestra, but possibly strong arts. Now, we'll get to that in a little while. The first match we're gonna have we had is a tag team match with different people. We have, of course, um, Soma Wananabe, Masato Kamin Kamiwa, taking on Rising Hayato and T Hawk. Now, this is a very interesting matchup because, you know, like I said, these guys are not from the same factions; they're from different, they're individual wrestlers who are not involved with no faction, or they come from other promotions, such as Rising Hamato from All Japan. But I was pretty much amazed how Rising Hamato and T-Hawk had got along great. But it was T-Hawk with his little um, Choco that able to win the match. So it was very surprising that he picked up the victory. But it was a good one showing what a strong heart he must be. Next up, we got women's tag team action. We have Madeline teaming up with her friend from World, uh, World Woman Pro Wrestling, Diana. Uh, I think that is... Aruka Umesaki taking on Mo Mochiko Miyagi and of course um, Momoka Hana uh, Anazono. Now recently uh, Michiko and Madeline have been at odds with each other since after uh, UWF version 2 which is the more of the mixed martial arts type of match. Madeline was the one that came on top but Deep down, I can sense that uh, Michiko was not very happy with the loss. She's always been the dominant force in Glee. She was the first person to be signed by the promotion, but it kind of led into this. <coughs> but, however, Umasaki and Madeline had worked really good pretty well. However, it was still the consistency with Michiko and um, Momoka. Will they get along? Well, they partially got it right, but however, it was Madeline who pulled off the arm bar to Momoka and watch allowed uh, Michiko to watch lose this match. But you can tell by this, this is not the end between both Madeline and Michiko. So we will see those two. And recently I just did discover that they will face each other in version 22. So 
Arsenal, but that too much background. Next up, we got singles competition. We got Aisa Eight taking on Taka Takanari Ito. It was a pretty good match, you know. I was like very interesting, but however, it was Ito who picked up this the match with a German suplex, allowing himself with the pinfall. One, two, three. It was done. So basically, um, Isa Eight. I um, don't know much about him, but I heard he's from Okinawa. But he did a pretty good job as well. Next up, we got another uh, tag team match from different people. We got Teda teaming up with the man, the myth, the legend, Shima, to take on Yu Izuka and Minoru Tanaka. These two guys have been very cohesive as a tag team, both Tanaka and I Izuka. So I don't know how this would work with um, Tida and Shima, but they pretty much did get in on the same page. But however, it was Tida who suffered the armbar in the, in the in the hands of Izuka in order to win the match. So it was a pretty good one. Next up, we got um, tag team action. We got Bulk Orchestra taking on, uh, consistent of, of course, um, Nobuhiro Sh um, Shimatani and Quiet Storm to take on Strong Hearts, El Linda Man, and Isi Unisaki. So it was, as you know, these two factions really hate each other completely to prove who is the dominant force. But surprisingly, it was Lil Lindemann. As you know, he's a small guy, but he's a very much of a powerhouse to pick up a, a bigger individual like Quiet Storm, allowing himself to put the German suplex on him to win. However, Lil Lindemann is not an idiot. As you know, he is the G Rex champion. He knows for a fact Quiet Storm would want to have a crack at his championship, but Lil Lindemann was smart enough to say, you know, I pin you. You challenged me for this title. And of course, Quiet Storm, no doubt, he accepted. Even though there was no subtitles, but I can guess that's what's going to happen. Now, our main event is Bulk Orchestra, consisting of Kasma Sakamoto, um, Ayato tu uh, Tumura, and Ryuchi Kami, um, Kawawami taking on 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Now, as you know, these two teams don't like each other regardless, but... As you know, I mentioned, 60 Seconds is a team that will not be tolerated by other factions knowing their existence. But however, <coughs> however, it was um, Kawakami who actually picked up the victory when he pinned Izuki. Now, this feud between these th factions are getting out of hand. However, Strong Arts are willing to admit, yes, Bulk Orchestra and Strong Arts are the two best factions. But however, they don't consider... 60 seconds as a threat from this expression, but however 60 seconds will not be ignored So we could see much maybe a possibility down the road with glee with more factions because that's has always been with many of the Japanese promotion With the exception of all of Japan. We hardly see a whole lot, but That's what I think is gonna happen. So I think that's pretty much it what we got with glee So let's move on with our last thing. We're going to do is news updates <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about the news updates. It appears that WWE are now interested in Bloodsport. Now, if you guys know what that is, this is a show that GCW does every year. It's produced by none other than Josh Barnett called Josh Barnett's Bloodsport. It has wrestlers who have calibers of MMA backgrounds. This is more like uh, something from the Kumite, if you guys follow the story. Uh, the original person who started it was Riddle, um, Matt Riddle. So now it appears that they're interested in this. Uh, there's a photo of Brett Lauderdale, the founder and owner of GCW in WrestleMania, even took a photo with Stephanie McMahon. Now, I don't know if this is something they were really interested to have as a brand because if you remember, they had a show similar as this, but more it was more theatrical called Raw Underground. Now, that show really sucked monkey balls. It was the worst show ever. I don't know why they had this. It wasn't like it was too theatrical. That's what I thought. But I'm assuming so that maybe they're thinking about having what they saw. If this is something real they want to have, then they should. But uh, it's still unclear what they're going to do. But uh, they seem to be interested. 
but we'll see how that is because recently Bloodsport's been produced by Josh Barnett, who is one of the instructors in New Japan, but I highly doubt they're going to have, uh, how to say, buy the trademark, but we'll see how that, what else is going to happen after this. Now, you guys know what today is. Today is April 15th, 2022. It's nearly two years since we remembered Black Wednesday, which 40 plus WWE employees were released. Now, this is the time of year where now wrestlers, uh, staff members, are now worried if there's going to be any releases. I'm sure they are scared to lose their jobs. I mean, I don't blame them for feeling this, but it's still unclear yet if there will be some releases. This is the time where after WrestleMania, they do some cuts, but since then we haven't heard anything yet. But at this moment, anything could happen. There's still no announcement from WWE one way or the other if there's any cuts or any been releases, but I will f pay attention closely on social media or any other places in order to find out for sure if that's the case. So I think that's pretty much it what we got today. I think it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, we will do VIP Wrestling, uh, D, uh, DFW, all uh, pro women show. It's all women's in this particular show. And then, of course, we got AEW Rampage and NXT Level Up, which I'm excited for that one because we're going to see Roxy make her debut known as Rox. And I know some of you are pretty much upset that they changed names, but you know how WWE, they act like something is broken, but in reality, it's not. But... We'll see how she performs in uh, NXT Level Up. And if there's any news updates since then, then I will post it up. But for now, I'll see you guys on the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.